Um, so our, our last speaker today, JC Probolski. JC is the head of communications, new, fairly newly, the head of communications and stakeholder engagement on the FSB task force, which she will tell us more about to come and give us more of an investor perspective of what we can do on climate. JC, please. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kevin, and thanks to all for, for having us here. Um, I, my, the title of uh, my, the organization that I represent is very, very long. I meant to talk about the importance of uh, focusing on risk, and I think I'm at risk if I don't get to it. So um, you won't hear me say too many words about the, the title of my organization, but let's get, let's get to it. I'm going to start with a quiz, actually. So if we go, oh, I have to do the next slide. <laughs> um, so how many, by show of hands, how many folks actually um, recognize this gentleman? Anyone? Say a couple? Okay, good. Um, so this is Mark Carney, and he's the governor of the Bank of England. He's also the chair of the Financial Stability Board. Um, and last September, Governor Carney gave a speech where he talked about the need to really think about climate change um, and the challenges that it could pose towards financial crisis. What he articulated was really a tragedy of the horizons. And what do we mean by that? Well, what he said was that when you think about monetary policy, you know, it's a basically a two to three year horizon. When you think about financial stability, it's a little bit longer, it's about a decade. And the challenge really is that by the time climate change becomes something that is you know, a defining issue, if you will, around financial stability, it could be too late. And what Governor Carney articulated were that there are a number of different types of ways that we can think about climate change as risks um, that potentially could affect financial stability. And, and he called out three. The first is physical risk. And this is something we're kind of familiar with, floods or other types of risks, right, extreme weather. The second are really around liability risks. And these are you know, essentially if those who are suffering from climate change um, losses were to seek compensation for them. And the third really is transition risk. And what do we mean by that? It's really a, a revaluation of assets as we move towards this um, lower carbon economy, right? And so within this context and within this background, there's also a body of research um, that's emerging that suggests that climate risk could serve or could have a material impact over the long term from an investment perspective. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this slide because I don't have too much time. But I think the thing to, to really call away from here is, you know, this is really about the economy and it's about financial performance. And it's also about this, again, risk reward, risk opportunity kind of dichotomy, if you will. So when we think about this sort of contextualization and that background, the thing to consider right now is, you know, today companies are, um, you know, very much have a responsibility, really a legal obligation to disclose from a financial perspective climate-related financial risk, right? But the frameworks to do that um, are, are not great. The second point here, I think, to, to consider and to think about is that when you think about this sort of um, fragmented reporting and fragmented disclosure that exists today, that really prevents folks across the entire investment value chain, whether it's creditors, investors, um, others, again, across that value chain, from using that existing disclosure to make, you know, to, to, from a decision-making perspective, right? And then you couple on the fact that from a regulatory perspective, you know, regulators struggle with using this existing disclosure to be able to assess really the vulnerability of the financial system from a climate-related risk perspective. So um, that's a big challenge. And essentially, last year, the G20 asked the, uh, was helped to create the Financial Stability Board's Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosure. And that's, that's what I'm here to sort of talk a little bit about and why it was created. And so the, the task force is really meant to try to address these challenges. And so it's brought together 30 members from around the world. And you see some of the logos here. These are members who represent you know, a broad cross-section of business, not just the investment community. So folks ag across that investment value chain, but also the preparers, you know, companies, uh, again, represented here. And our membership is drawn from this broad cross-section. And what we're really trying to do is to create recommendations for voluntary climate-related financial disclosure, which is no small task. Um, you know, the session is about accelerating ambition, and, and there's a lot of work to be done here, right? Um, and the task force has, was created in December, and so it's been at work now um, you know, on a very short timeline for the last few months. And I think the thing that I would like folks to take away, the task force is chaired by Michael Bloomberg, and again, 
what we've been trying to do is get to work. And so phase one of the task force work sort of ended in March, where we published a, a phase one report, which kind of set the path forward for the work to come. There was a public consultation period. Maybe some of you um, have, uh, have con were able to submit responses from a public consultation period. But right now, we're in phase two. And what I want to sort of implore and leave you with is that as part of phase two, what we're trying to do um, is really engage folks from industry in particular to really help us develop these recommendations. Because at the end of the day, in order for us to be successful, we want to create voluntary standards. And it, it's not mandatory. They're voluntary standards for companies, all companies, to be able to report climate-related risk in their financial filings. Like that, that is the end goal of what the task force is meant to do. So as we move into phase two, we're going to be going out around the world. Um, it is a global task force, and it is industry-led. And that's the key differentiator here as well. So many others have gone before and done great work around climate, around ESG broadly, but specifically around climate. And the task force isn't trying to reinvent the wheel. It's just trying to build on all of that great work. And so my ask to all of you is to join us, to follow the task force, um, sign up on our website, and really learn more about us so that we can invite you to industry-specific industry sessions but that also if you represent other parts of society that you have different opportunities to engage with us because it's important. And I hope that if we can all engage in this and work together, then we can all help break that tragedy of the horizon. So thank you very much.